Hi everybody, this is Diane. Well, I've been working on organizing this room. This is my office and it is a mess, but I have been organizing it bit by bit this week as I'm not making journals this week. And part of my um, job for the week was to do some organizing in the house, not just crafting supplies, but I've really been, I started in this room uh, the other day and I thought, well, I just need to work on this room until it's done. So let me show you the mess first. So I don't have to try to avoid it, but there's stuff all over the floor. Um, this is a small room. There's my piano and in the corner, you'll see um, a bag of things that I might use for packing orders and I need to organize that. My daughter gave me that bag <clears throat> and I haven't done anything with it. So it's got wadded up packing paper that I can take out and smooth out and, you know, make it uh, fit better. Um, but there's my desk where I do Bible study and my bookshelf. Um, and that empty space at the bottom is where all that, that stack of folders, that stack of folders belongs right there. But I'm going through that stuff. And there's some art supplies there, my printer, uh, let me show you this, because this is one of the best parts of the room. This little, uh, just this little shelf that hangs on my wall that contains the smaller, more lightweight journals that I either made or purchased. And you got to see those in videos over the summer. This is what we're going to look at today. This is the closet. So that's, I've got that all organized and I'm so proud of it. And I also organized this corner here that's behind the door. Uh, this is my shipping supplies. So I have just some boxes that I got from Amazon or um, other things that I think might be good sizes for shipping journals and things. And then here I have my padded envelopes and some of the flat rate envelopes, flat rate boxes are down there. And um, down here, I have three sizes of boxes. One, two, three. Those are for the journals that I make. Those are the sizes that I use. And when I run low on one size, I just order another pack, but they last me a good while. And up here is those, the air, the air, pocket bags that come with your Amazon orders. I use them to pad my boxes of journals. And those are just gift bags that I can use from time to time for my gifts, not just for packing orders. Um, so here's my shipping supplies. When I come in here to ship orders, I pull out that table, set it up, and then I'm all set to start packing orders. So I have my you know, pens and pencils and scissors, ruler, tape. Um, some more tape and staples in there. Um, here I have my packing tape. These are cellophane bags. I have two drawers of cellophane bags. Those are the two sizes, the two biggest sizes, and then all the smaller sizes. Tissue paper. Um, oh, this tissue paper must have slipped through. Um, I only have two of these, or three of these little envelopes left, so oh, four. I have four. So I don't know if I need to order more of those or if I'm going to keep using them. So I had smaller envelopes, and I'm running low on them. There's this size, and there's not many of them left either. So I have empty drawers where they were full of those envelopes. And then these are envelopes that aren't padded. I got more tissue paper here that I just bought. So that's all organized. I, so I started in this corner and then I moved to this closet. I was stuck here for, day, for a couple of days. Let's look inside. This is my closet. All neat and tidy. So let's start at the top. First of all, I have these 
lights here, uh, battery operated lights. I tipped them down so they, they can provide some light, but I didn't want the light showing at the camera. So I just tipped them down a little bit. So up here, the, this is where I keep my collections. I have different types of containers for the collection. So I have these big iris boxes um, when they expand and I need more room. So I'm, t I'm looking up, so my voice sounds a little strained. Uh, this is farm supplies, but I have so many that I actually have this plus one of these big 12 inch or 12 by 12 paper um, envelopes for more more farm and you'll see that. So this is the mail, the mail theme journal. This is Wizard of Oz. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Cause I used to have them labeled on the side, but they're not labeled. So I don't know what that one is. Uh, that one is Art Deco. And these little boxes are Project Life boxes. I got these at the flea market last year. Um, and so I just put little, like just the beginnings of a collection that I don't don't have enough to fill up one of these things. So this one has retro and art themed and then whatever else was in there I used. So I scribbled it off or else it grew into a bigger. There's the other farm one. There's some fabric in that one. Um, this one is summer in Hawaii. see strawberries 1920s William Morris Holly Hobby summer uh, and patriotic Dutch Raggedy Ann uh, Faith fairy tale because I have uh, fairy tale golden books and I think I have a fairy tale book that I can just stick those into and Barbie. So here are vintage um, recipes and little recipe booklets and things that would go in a recipe book and these are handwritten recipes. Okay so here I have one, two, three, four milk crates, or wooden crates, um, stacked as bookshelf. On the top, I have this that contains magazine images and things for collage in my glue books. And here is a smash book that I want to put my childhood um, memories in. And these are just books that I use right here. And here, these are books that I'm currently working in. Here are packets that came with um, journals that I ordered. This is my Susie Stove packet. It goes with my Susie Stove book and this is for Bambi book or something like that. So yeah, those are these are for things that I use right now. And this little box here contains my tiny little glue books that I've completed or this little envelope one I I've had it for a long time, but I need to just take some time and finish gluing stuff on it. Now, these three crates are all book covers. And I, for most of them, I take the pages out. You can see a couple that still have pages in them. Uh, I left the pages in the Raggedy Ann books because um, they don't take up that much room and I want to use them in the books themselves, in the journals. So I just have, these are all book covers and I had to take that one binder out because I didn't have room for everything. So if I would just make those binder journals, I would have a lot more room. Those are all book covers. And then over here, I have a plastic, plastic shelves, little drawer unit on top of this cubby unit that I bought and put together, bought it at Walmart. And on the top is this galvanized organizer. And this contains all 
homemaker stuff. Different types of homemaker ephemera. And this cigar box contains smaller pieces of homemaker stuff. It could contain some sewing and recipe stuff, but the main focus is homemaker. And here I have two drawers of sewing. And I know I just disposed of sewing supplies, but I did keep some. I have two sewing binders down there to do. And I, and I can use sewing ephemera in homemaker journals too. So I did keep some. So there's um, some scrapbook paper down here and just other other things. And this one has all those pages that came out of the teachers, the sewing teacher's notebook. So it's a thick stack of papers there. And this is another sewing teacher's instruction, or her, her notebook for her classes. And this is all... Uh, needlework stuff from vintage magazines. This is vintage calendars. I love the vintage calendars. And over on this part of the cubicle part, this um, had some sheets in it or something like that. And now it has vintage patterns. And these patterns are ones that I think would make excellent journal covers. So I separated them out from the other patterns. Um, these are some file dividers that I just got this year at the flea market. I think they're so cool. And some, these are not folders, they are dividers. They both are just dividers. Um, and I got these this year also. And, oh, this is just a little packet that I started to put uh, shabby, grungy stuff in. Um, so I can... When I want to make a grungy journal, I'll look in here for some grungy stuff. There's not much in it right now. And this is just a piece of corrugated cardboard all rolled up. Then in the cubicle itself, this is all the pat all the rest of the patterns. There's a lot of sewing patterns there. And this, um, I just, as I organized it this week, decided to use this because it was almost empty and I took out what was in it. And now I decided to use it for large pieces to use in large journals like domestic arts journals. When I want larger pieces, I'll know right where to go. Um, down here are file folders that I cut up and use, uh, the hanging file folders um, ledger books and over here are plain book book covers so I can decorate them to be anything I want them to be they don't have pictures on them and then this is full of stuff for domestic arts journals there's fabric pieces all kinds of fun stuff there's the um, innards of sewing patterns that I've used Lots of fun stuff in there. So that's my domestic art supplies. And, well, this was on it too. It just slipped out. These are samples of gimp trims. And it's a very old sample. Down here, this is a really fun shelf. So this little container holds all kinds of interesting things to use in journals. Um, I will take this to my craft room and go through it with you. I'll tack it on at the end of the video because there's a lot of fun stuff in here. And on this side is more stuff I can use to make journals. So I'll bring all this stuff into my craft room on the table. And down here are beads. Lots of beads. And this little pile right here is what I use when I'm working in my personal journal, like my Amity Bloom Everyday Journal. These are, look at my York Peppermint Patty can. These have either my uh, ephemera. Oh, I can't stand that up with one hand. Just things that I think would look good in my Amity Bloom Everyday Journal or actually ephemera that I've saved from events and activities that I've done are down there. So that's my closet. 
um, hang on because I will take you to my craft room and show you what's in those. Uh, if you want to, if I have time, maybe I'll tack on what's in there too. So I'm going to turn these lights off because I am notorious for forgetting to turn them off. And then the next time I open my closet, there's a very, very, very dim light and the battery's almost dead. So I'll be right back. Okay, before I get into showing you what was in the rest of those things, um, as I was cleaning in there, I separated these things out. These are, I found these, those don't, those don't belong there. These I cut off of old patterns that were in bad shape. See, her, her head is torn. But sometimes the image was fine, but the pattern was bad like really messed up. So I have to tape her and her, but most of the images are good. Some of these came out of, um, um, well, that is a pattern. I was thinking that was a pattern book. So I want to make some ephemera with some of those. And then I, I have all these, this is just plain sewing tissue. This is before they printed on the sewing tissue. Um, I'm not sure how it was used, but anyway, it's just plain unprinted tissue, and I thought I could play around with that, crinkle it up, and do some fun stuff with it. But these are the pattern instructions that have the images of the patterns on the front, and I have a bunch of them. So I want to make ephemera with these, lots and lots of them. And this pattern, I already took one image out, so I might as well take those out and add them to the, that pile there. And uh, this is a bag that I had some stuff stored in in the closet, so I might use that for creating some of this ephemera. But also, so I think this will be a, a project to come up soon, doing using some of these pieces. And I can use these things too because I had to remove some of the some of the file, file folders that I had stored in there. I didn't need this many in there, so. This was from a photo album, so I'm going to cut this up and make ephemera with it. And this too. So I just took some of these folders that I've been saving because they're cool and I want to use them to make things. And so I, I took them out so I can actually cut them into shapes and be ready to use them. So I'll cut this into a tag. I like that it's textured. These file folders, I thought they were cool because they were a, a unique color, but they're super thin. So uh, I'm not going to use them for spines. Um, they, you wouldn't see the color anyway. So I'm just going to cut them up for tags, get rid of the metal pieces. And I just had one orange folder, so I'll cut that up. So that's basically what I brought these in here for was just so I can cut them. This has a pocket right there. I'm probably never going to use it like that. It's so big. Somebody used it to store maybe baby cards and anniversary cards and miscellaneous cards, but I got them at the thrift store. So I can cut them up into, oh, somebody left a card in there. I gotta check all those pockets. I can cut them up into tag shapes or pocket shapes and have them ready to use. Oh, those are empty. I have some white ones that came from Creative Memories, but again, I got them at the thrift store, so I can cut those up. Just, I'll just make a few tags of different colors and just some plain ones too. I'll have these all ready. I'll have a stack of tags and my cutting paper cutter blade will be dull. Okay, now let's look at what's in this fun tote. I got this set of two, they're kind of velvety, at Aldi a few years ago. So the other one has my sewing patterns in it. And this one has miscellaneous junk journal cover stuff. All right, so maybe not all covers. This came out of, I don't think it was in anything. I think this was just a separate thing. I forgot I had this. That's cool. I don't know what I'll use it for, but I like it. Um, this is envelopes that came out of a recipe binder. So I started playing around with this one. 
I folded this up and then folded the flap in. So I can do something with that in a journal. And then these are were from a, a household binder. And I used the binder to create, I think I used both of the binders to create a journal. This was just a sign, wet Dutch boy white lead. So it must be paint with lead in it, but I thought the graphic was cool and I might be able to make use that on a cover. And these two, these are at, um, examples of graphic art that uh, a sign maker would, or an engraver, they were advertising their um, business. So you could see how well they did their designs. These are originals. This has white out on it and this one looks pretty good. You can, you, I think I see some pencil. Yeah, there's a little bit of white out pencil marks. Um, this one actually had something cut out and glued on top of it. So it must be they didn't like what was underneath. And so they redid this part and glued it on top. There's a paper clip mark there. So they're pretty cool and they would, they would look nice on a journal cover. Then I have my lace up cards to make journal to add to journal covers. So I have quite a collection of those. I have used some. I used some in the 4th of July journals I did this year, but I really want to do some real soon because I have a lot of these. And even these little ones I could add to the front of a journal. Also, I have these cabinet cards. I, the photos are removed, but maybe I could use, like just take this frame out and put it on the front of a cover. This would make, I could make a cute little journal with this, remove the frame use that for something else, and then sew some signatures in here somehow, if I wanted to. So they're just some nice frames. Um, these, oh, that goes with these. These are just picture cards that were used in a classroom. I wouldn't use all of them on a journal cover. This might be a cute one, and the wagon would definitely be a cute one. But I like to put these cards in domestic arts journals too. I like the pig, that would be a cute farm journal. The old fashioned record player. A globe, so there's a lot of pages, a lot of cards that I could use as a journal cover. But mostly I'll just use them for domestic arts journals. But these could make a fun journal cover. I have three stationary folders. These two are from Current and they're for the Justin Notes, the ones that you fold. So I could make a one signature journal with these. With a little pocket there. And this is, this is adorable, this is older. Children's stationary. Isn't that so cute? So it has three pockets. And I could um, see, open this up and then open this and then the journal pages would be here. And then you'd have these two pockets that you could use. Plus you could put something in the back pocket too. I have some mini file folders that I could either use in a journal or make a journal out of. Use these as the cover. I have made some journals with these covers or with these folders some insurance um, miniature file folders. Um, and when am I going to get all these journals done, right? Oh, I have these uh, record, 45 records. Um, I probably won't make journal covers with these, but with the wrappers, I would put them inside a journal. I thought the patterns and the uh, graphics on the fonts were cool. This one is torn. I would have to do some repair work, but I really liked this. 
dungaree doll image. Here's the Capitol building. And in my Mary Oldsmobile, isn't that so cute? Peter Pan Records. This is a coloring book. I love the cover of it, so I might make this into a journal, like maybe glue, um, add this to the front of a journal that I make. And the pages are adorable too. Oh, I could take these out for the duck journal that I'm doing now. Is there a skunk in here? Look at that little cowboy, he's so cute. I don't see a year. But that looks like the 1930s style of art. I don't think this book is that old. I like the duck. Oh my goodness. So I'll set this aside and maybe use the duck for the duck golden book journal that I'm doing. This is a greeting card. And I have other greeting cards. This is a nice big one and I just thought she was so cute. I usually get greeting cards in bundles or like in a scrapbook because it's a better price but when they sell them individually I don't usually. This one was a dollar at the flea market that I go to in the barns and I thought it was worth a dollar for that because I could use that on the cover. And then I got these somewhere. I don't even remember where I got them. It was a flea market, I'm sure, but I don't even remember because I've had them for a while, but I thought they were in with my greeting cards. And then as I was going through the cards one day looking for something, I thought these are a whole collection of unused cards that I could make um, a set of journals with. These would be on the cover of the journals. They're so cute, little children. I picked these up at the library, I think, free books at the library. Um, I, I only, I've done this a few times, use paperback novel covers to make a traveler's notebook journal, because I, I add it to the front of the journal. This isn't this, the size that I use but I'm picky about the covers and the titles that I use. But I found these four and I thought all of these would be great for a traveler's notebook journal. Kind of snarky or not snarky, but tongue in cheek maybe, smuggled love. <laughs> the edge of beyond. So one day I'll get to those. And then these Whitman books, I found these um, on two different occasions in one year at the flea market. Uh, two different vendors, I think. So I, th I could make another collection of journals with these if I decided to. These I want to do. Uh, I had seen... Oh, where are we time-wise? Oh, I forgot. I have to tack this on to the other video and I don't know how long that one was. So these are little date books and they're from four different companies. We have Ambassador, Hallmark, American Greetings, and Gibson. And I found them four different times, not together, different years. I'm pretty sure I had this one because I used to get them at the little Hallmark store. Um, when I was a teenager, I'd pick them up and carry them around and write stuff in them. But I had this one. I don't. I didn't have any of the others because they were. It was Hallmark that I had all the time. So I saw Gina Davis, Gina, Gina Johnson. Sorry, Gina Davis is an actress. Gina Johnson from the Rebookery, and now her channel is called Stellar Studios, and she does more art journal stuff than journal stuff. I mean, she does journals, but she doesn't sell them in her shop anymore. But anyway, she took these. She lives in Kansas City, which is where Hallmark is headquartered. So she finds a lot of Hallmark stuff. And she took the covers of Hallmark things and put them in the center of a fabric journal cover. And I would love to do that with these. 
I have these little milk cartons. When I bought them, I didn't know what I would do with them. I still don't know what I'll do with them. But I could make a journal with them. So I have them. These are antique Sunday school attendance book covers. They're pretty plain, but they're very shabby and old. And I think they'll make some really cool, shabby, grungy journals. And this is just a cover from a book that I, I can use somehow. Um, this was a fabric book that someone made for a baby. And I had forgotten what the inside pages looked like. It had the outer, outer, the cover page, and I didn't really like it. So I got rid of that yesterday. But when I saw what was inside, I thought I need to make covers, journal covers with these. So there's this face and some tools and this clock that moves. And this shirt with a zipper. I didn't really want this on the outside, but I want her on the front. So this has to be on the outside. So I would do something to keep them from flapping around. And then the other book would have these sneakers on the front. And there's a pocket here. Oh, I bet this, this pocket contained the shapes. I'll have to make some shapes to add to those because those are gone. This looks like an oven mitt and it's quilted. Oh, there's a pocket here too. Oh, I bet the child could put their hand in there. Huh, ah, that's cute. And the house, I love the house. I would love to have that on the front, but it won't work that way. This is how it was in the book, but I didn't want this on the front. I wish this could be on the front. And the door opens and there's a little person in there. So the sneakers on the front is another good option. So I can't wait to make a journal out of this. I have to, have to hurry probably, we'll see how I can uh, upload this. Um, this is just the front of one of those fundraiser recipe books, and I just love this, Kitchen Capers, so I can use that in a cookbook journal. And then these are a purchase from earlier this year, I think, at the flea market, and they are lace-up paper dolls. So they're like the lace-up cards, but you use strings that they didn't come with. This is for her, but it doesn't fit her arm. But you, the holes line up with the holes on her body, and then you just, the child would lace them on and then play with the doll. So I thought these would be great to make a fabric covered journal and make a pocket on the front to tuck the doll into. And I have three dolls. And lastly, in this little basket are five books from Hallmark. Some of them have the cover uh, or the, a picture on the front, but it's not the, not the same as on this. So I would definitely include this in the journal. And I make tiny little journals with these. It's just plain. So that's a lot of stuff in that one little basket, and I told you it was a basket full of fun. I'm just going to tidy this stuff up. everything fit in there and then off to the side of that basket was this pile of stuff so we have the color by numbers book because uh, I love the cover of that I don't usually buy coloring books but I thought this one looked really unique and it's 19 looks like 34 is it 30 
maybe 50. It's not a very clear printing there, probably 50. Yeah. Anyway, it's colored by number. The pictures are awesome. So I'm not sure what, how I'll use the pictures, but I could definitely use the cover on a large journal. Here's from an antique photo album. I could put that on the front of a journal. I have some paper, I have some paper doll book covers to make a journal if I wanted to. I don't, oops, I'm sorry. I don't know if I would want the cover to be sideways, but I don't know. We'll think about that. This one is fun. So I could turn this into a cover. It would be a big book, 1967, but it's so cute. I have used pieces of this inner part to make pockets in other journals. And I don't know about this one, but I thought this was too cute. It was a little box that had eight coloring books in it. I have interdepartment mail envelopes. So this one was used, but not very much. It just has a uh, address label stuck on it. Didn't have any writing on it, but I ordered these from, I think probably an Etsy seller. So I have a pile of them that I haven't even used, but they'd make great journal covers. These are old envelopes. These had a lot of advertising materials for a local pharmacy back in the day that's no longer there. This is dated 1961. And so is this one. But I love this one with all the little cartoon characters around it. That would be a big journal, too. This would be a smaller one, but I like this. I don't, I'm not crazy about the gray, but it definitely looks vintage, and I could do a lot of fun stamping on it, and I like this label. These are not for journal covers. They are envelopes. I could use the envelope inside a journal, but the they contain large sheets of patterns. So it was a craft club. And I saved three of them. I sold a bunch of those. This um, was a notebook that I got at the flea market just because I love this orange. Is this material called press board? That's what I call it because that's what I think it is. But it's that mottled, sturdy cardboard. So there's the cover. But I want to do something with that. And then here's the same thing, but in the rust color that you see more often. And um, pieces of a Candyland game. This one was in, no, that's the outside of the box. This is the inside piece. So I could definitely make a, a journal with that. And this is a new game. Traveling to Wheatsworth Castle. So this was a promotion from a cereal company, I believe. Eat Wheatsworth every day. It's from the National Biscuit Company, Nabisco. Bakers of Shredded Wheat, Ritz, You Need a Biscuit, and other famous varieties. But I thought, I love this, and I could take it apart and make several journals out of it. And I have these sweet little teddy bear decals that I could use on journal covers, make a series of journals. Maybe this on a cover and maybe these inside a journal. I'm not sure how I want to use those, but this guy could definitely be a cover. And I have um, grits and cornmeal, unused bags. I could make little journals out of these. And Henkel's cake and pastry flour. I love the graphics on that. This is a beat up, very beat up flower bag. It wasn't used, it just wasn't stored very well because it's pretty, this corner down here is beat up, but it's so pretty. And this one is even worse, but I will definitely use them. And then this, I think I just got this one this year, Canton Roller Mills Buckwheat Flower. Love that. Look how big this is. And this one is just a part of a bag. So part of the graphic is gone, but it's so pretty. I wonder what this said, Elmira's what? 
Elmira is very close to where I live, and it's in New York, and there's some more Henkels. So that's that's what was uh, next to that little basket there. I brought in the domestic art stuff too, but I'm not gonna, I don't think I have time to do that. So we're not gonna go through that one today. But I hope that you enjoyed seeing this. Um, I hope it was okay, the quality of the video, the moving around and the quickness, because I was trying to go get through things pretty fast. So I will continue. I have a few more days of my vacation. <laughs> vacation from making journals is what it is, really. Um, so I have a few more days to hopefully finish that, that room. I'm going through things now that it, it's a little time consuming. So hopefully I'll get it done. All right, so that was what I've done so far with organizing in that room. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my supplies and how I store them. I hope you'll come back for the next video. Have a creative day. Bye.